I have experienced it more than once, you know, and um, I did an I did an episode where I speak about um, complacency. I speak about not um, doing what is suggested in the program and what that leads to, you know. And I've also done that did another episode where I talk about um, relapses and I talk about um, addiction in general. So from the, from your perspective, what would you tell somebody who has relapsed and is, is, is finding it difficult to come back and ask for help? What would you say to somebody like that? If you ever bump into them? Well, I've bumped into a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> including me <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, most of the time what what we the, the discussion is going to be around the idea of ego that what, what makes it difficult to go back and start again is your ego because it tells you oh now you had this in the bag and people think this you know mm. and i say to them Forget what people are thinking about you. It's none of your business, you know. Mm. Just focus on what you need now. And 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 when you you relapse, the the most important perspective you should have is that a relapse is not an end of your sobriety. It is another step, you know. For some people, the journey is. Mm. It's got its dips, its highs, it's got its lows, yes. it's got its turns. And relapse for some people is part of the journey. I know the guy, you know, I don't know if he's still in the fellowship, we've not been meeting now, who was in the fellowship for 15 years. Mm. And he never made a year in that 15 years. And when I met him, he was now 15 years old. Yeah? So it's not the end, you know? Yes. But it's it's really it's really just getting to the basics. People don't, I think that's what we miss most of the time. You were talking about complacency. Mm. There are basic things you have to do. You cannot escape. And if you really do understand that our disease is a spiritual disease. Mm. There are is a spiritual malady. Once you understand that, it means you need spiritual solutions, which is the step. But also, it's got to do with our emotions and it's got to do with our habits. Mm. So when we have found sobriety, we have to maintain. And there are several things that we do in order to maintain our sobriety. Um, in the NA, they talk, they talk of the pillars, the five pillars. Yes. You know? and I think it's a good way of reminding oneself of what I'm supposed to do in order to maintain. I need to find my heart out and be in communication with my heart out. I need to have a sponsor. Mm -hmm. And this sponsor must help me to do the steps. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I must read my literature. Mm -hmm. And finally, I must be of service to other people. If I do these things diligently, hmm, I should be able to stay sober. Hmm? Because in doing my steps properly, if I do my step 10 regularly, it means that anything that crops up for the day, I'm going to look at it. If I can't look at it alone, then I'm going to engage my sponsor and we discuss if I find that there's something wrong that I've done, then I'm going to uh, make amends, mm. you know? Mm. And, and so that, that if you follow that, just 
the five pillars. They give you a formula to what, what to do in order to maintain this sobriety that you have. And, and when you say a person is complacent, it is when they're no longer doing the five pillars. Sometimes they're doing the one pillar. Mm. You just go to meet once in a while. You know? Mm. Or, or people have this idea that when you do fellowship and go to meetings and read literature and gain all of this knowledge of what is taught in the rooms then you should be okay and i think this point that you're raising now is 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 quite important because i have been looking at what it is that was missing in my recovery that that contributed to me dropping my god um and 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 not following what is suggested um, should be followed. Um, as, as an example, um, the five pillars you mentioned are step work, get a sponsor, meetings and literature, uh, God, um, and service. service. And um, when I came back into the rooms, I, um, my, my, I, I, I found a new sponsor and 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 those two items you see I even forgot um service uh my relationship with my higher power um and also the fact that I had <clears throat> some reservations that I was not aware of and um I went to a meeting that they were discussing reservations and how reservations can be detrimental to one's recovery but it was um i wasn't doing enough service um i was also literally taking my higher power for granted and in my happiness and my excitation and everything was going so well i had just turned a year another celebration of a year sober and i realized that those five pillars are something that I need to take seriously. So where I am right now is, is, is quite fascinating because I'm doing service. I started a meeting and I'm trying to find other service positions in, in, in other meetings. And I pray every day, I meditate. And I think um, I use prayer to talk to God and I use meditation to listen to my higher power yeah. so from what you said I think it's something that I need to take home with me and 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 make sure that all of those things are done but I just want you to look at other points that you think are important that we need to to stay sober and live on life's terms and appreciate life without alcohol and i think the last time we were talking you were you were telling me that i need to define um my understanding of fun do you would you like to get into that and some relapse prevention um tools that you may have for us and and anything else that you'd like to add thank you i, I think yeah um the, the first overall idea around relapse prevention is when you become sober and you want to stay sober, you have to change your lifestyle. You just can't keep the old lifestyle and expect to have a new life, you know? Mm -hmm. And they do say that if you keep doing what you've been doing, you keep getting what you've been getting. So that, that's the very first thing that I would say, that you, you just have to change your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the next thing, I take that point that you came up with, one of the things I do with my sponsees is an exercise in redefining fun. Mm -hmm. uh, because fun was always associated to, al to alcohol. You know, it was fun if I had money and, and the chicks and 
and the car was full of petrol and 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 there was a venue to go to mm. that 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 you know that's what we called fun it's amazing how <laughs> we would then say in the morning i was so drunk i don't remember what happened and we call that fun <laughs> yes <laughs> remember <what happened. laughs> so so if you've got to take time and and identify what will then stand as fun for you for me uh i have fun every day because every day i'm working with somebody and the fun for me is identify helping people identify what their blockages are and how they can overcome them oh it's so exciting for me you know i do that work because it's extremely challenging and the reason why it's challenging is because there's never two people that have the same thing. Mm. So you never know what you're meeting with every time when you're working with a person. And even when you think now you, you've you got the hang of, this person has this problem, has that. There are so many nuances that are different. So the very person that you think you are making sense of today, tomorrow could look like a totally different person that you can't make sense of. Mm. So fun for me is that journey of searching, of, of hitting the wall. Because quite a lot of times I hit a wall and, and, and I'm busy in a session and I can see I've now hit a wall and I don't know what direction to take. And then I say, what do I do now? And, and in that split moment, I plug in and I connect to God. And I said, God, I have no bloody idea what I'm supposed to say next. You take over now. <laughs> And some of God comes through for me and I find myself saying something and then suddenly an idea starts opening up and the other person is picking it up or picking up on it and it resonates with them. And then now we've got another path that we're taking and I'm saying, oh yeah, we're doing it, we're doing it, we're moving forward. That for me has become fun, you know? And, and yeah, um, going to a meeting and and meeting newcomers, one of the things that I really love uh, is is being in the front row of miracles. Now, wh what do I mean by that? It it is when you go into into a meeting and you see the people coming in for the first time, you know, dejected, um, mm -hmm. uh, feeling sad, and um, no confidence, um. And most of them physically beaten up, you know, it was all about moving, you know, and you see a person really down, you know, and then you see that person three weeks later, mm. and you see that, huh? mm. and then you see that person three months later, mm. and you see, you know, that, what else do I need to see miracles? That's a miracle happening right in front of my eyes. And as long as I keep going to meetings, I keep experiencing and watching that happen. Sometimes it's those that are going to ask me to sponsor them. And, and the tendency is that I work mostly with people that have been in the fellowship a long time and they don't seem to find it. Mm. You know? and, and those are the people that usually come to me now. And, 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 and I watch this person with all the resistance that they, they bring you know, in the relationship the sponsor sponsor relationship and I start working with them and slowly and slowly we're chipping away at this thing mm. and suddenly this changes you know mm. and and I'm looking at the different ways in which people change I'll accept this but I won't accept that you know? <laughs> and, then, uh, you know? and, and instead of that making me uh, angry it, it's very exciting for me because I'm, I'm seeing the progress and, and I always make sure I show them how they are changing. There's, there's a lady I was working with, you know, and, 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 and it was a combination of addiction and uh, trauma and quite a lot of things that came together. Mm -hmm. And she's been in, she had been in therapy for a long time, more than two decades, and, and nothing was happening. And, and her face. Was, was sad and angry. There was a lot of bitterness every time, when she, even when she was speaking and all that. 
Mm. If you can see a smile for me, it's fine. <laughs> Every time when, when she says, hello, Mr. D, and I say, hello, and I see that smile, and, and we get into working with her, mm. and we get into fencing when she's she's refusing the latest thing that I'm bringing, and I've got to take it around, and you know, that for me is fun. And then there are many other things that you can include in, in, the, in your in your life because like i said it's a lifestyle change you know um you, you need the, the the challenge that we also have that sometimes take people back is cross addiction if you are not conscious of cross addiction mm. then because we sometimes stop one addiction and we focus on that. Are you still okay. here? Your yes. face is frozen. I am. Okay. So, so quite a lot of times, people cross addict. Okay. Remember, we said the real problem is a spiritual problem. Okay? Yes. And then, so the drinking or the smoking or the behavior, the addictive behavior, all those are just symptoms of the problem. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't deal with this, you can then deal with this drinking and you stop drinking and you stop smoking tacha. Yes. Or you, you stop drinking and you start eating, overeating, which is usual <laughs> for yes. most of us. For most of us. <laughs> now you get into relationships. So yes. Now you become a relationship addict or you become a sex addict. And others become gambling addicts, mm -hmm. you know? So we cross addict. Now, what the problem is, is that most of the time after we cross addicted, that addiction now becomes such a heavy burden, takes you back to your original. Because you're using the original, because your brain has, has um, concluded in its, in, the, in it by itself that, this is my go-to. When the road um, gets tough, I can go to the solution. And it usually happens yeah. when we are not paying attention um, and our mind is, is, is operating on autopilot when it happens. So you are sober, you're not drinking alcohol anymore, but... Um, the ego will then grab at any other addiction that you might have, any other behavioral problems. Um, because if your ego grabs a hold of that, then, you know, it, it, it helps you lose or it makes you lose that focus um, that, that is required in recovery and slowly brings you back. To your primary addiction because that's the only solution you become um left with at that point you spoke of the autopilot and i think that's an important thing they they speak a lot in the 12 step program of being vigilant you've got to be vigilant all the time mm. it says we cannot rest on our laurels what are they talking about if you don't go to meetings you don't do your literature and you're not working with another person Nothing is reminding you one of the problem and nothing is reminding you of the tools and the skills that you have learned. Mm. And therefore, once you start forgetting those things, mm. you go back to the old way of doing things, which is our autopilot. It's still there 25 years later. I know it's still there, mm. but it's not operational because I'm vigilant. I'm constantly using the tools. I'm constantly talking the language. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly working with newcomers, with, you know, and then there are projects that I have to, I, I participate in, I'm in the media sometimes, and, but I'm all, always reminding myself that one, I am an alcoholic too, mm -hmm. that if I don't do these things, I'm going to go back. Mm -hmm. So, this, this thing of resting on our laurels is really talking about stopping to do the things that made it possible for me to stop drinking in the first place. Mm. 
Mm. Once I stop doing those things, I'm going to start doing other things that are going to take me back to that same old way I used to do this before I stopped doing it. Whew. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. So um, I think we've covered um, most of what I think um, is important for anyone who will be listening to this. Is there anything that you feel we've left out um, that you feel is important for this conversation going forward? No, I think we've covered what we need to cover for the day. Uh, maybe the last thing um, that I'll just throw in is, um, you know, when I got into the fellowship, they said, we will love you until you learn to love yourself. Yes. It took a while for me to understand what they were doing. I didn't understand what they meant when they said, I will learn to love myself. Because I didn't realize that I actually know. Mm. And so the whole process of doing the steps partly is learning to accept that you love yourself. And that doesn't come easy. Yeah. And it doesn't come quickly. Because it's been in our minds, it's been an attitude that we've had for a very, very long time, all our lives. And so it takes a lot of effort and work to do that. And what I learned was to be to be to be loving to myself. I actually learned by being loving to another person first. Mm. As I expressed the love to the newcomer, I started realizing that I needed to give that very love to myself. And then I started doing that slowly. And bit by bit, I learned to love myself. I still have moments when I don't. Mm. But now I catch myself faster and then turn things around and start being gentle. And so at the end of the day, the biggest thing about sobriety, I believe, is to love ourselves. Because the essence of ourselves is the heart part. Mm. And when you love yourself, you're loving the God that lives in you, that makes life possible in you. Mm. And so my parting shot would be, love yourself, be gentle with yourself. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Um, I really appreciate you giving um, your time. I enjoyed myself too. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> yes. That's fun. That's fun. That's fun. And <clears throat> um, I just wanted to share with you also, um, Ogoti, I find that me doing these things and talking about um, these things and doing videos on it, I find is so much fun. Um, editing, doing the thumbnails and all of these things. And what I find more fun, like yesterday, I was I was going through something in my head. And um, my partner said to me, hang on, you did an episode uh, last year, 2020, no, the pre 2021. Why don't you go to that episode and listen to it? And it gives me this opportunity to go back and um, remind myself of what it is um I spoke about and what it is I had learned previously and it's it's absolutely great so this is fun for me and if we can do it like once a month or whenever you're available I would really appreciate it great